Okay, we'll we'll just pray and start. Father God, we just want to thank you for this day. Lord, even as we come to your presence, Lord, we are humbled by your Lord, awesome power and wisdom and beauty and holiness, Lord. Father God, as we come, we, we realize, Lord, um, Lord, our our own frailty, but Lord, we are we stand in awe of your infinite um, Lord power and wisdom. And Lord, we thank you for making us who we are. Lord, we thank you for drawing us and to yourself with your amazing love. And um, we thank you for Lord, making a way for us to come to your presence, Lord, uh, without any hindrances, Lord. And uh, and so, God, we, we just want to thank you. We thank you that uh, there's no limitation, there's no hindrance to um, come to you. Father God, and uh, we thank you that you called us to come with boldness and confidence and courage and because of your grace and mercy. And in order to receive grace and mercy every day, we can do that, Lord. Thank you for this awesome privilege. Um, yes, Lord, we stand in awe of you. And, and this morning, God, we, we just commit this entire day into your mighty hands, God, entire day of learning and receiving. And uh, Spirit of God, we pray that you would um, breathe life Father God, uh, over every area of our lives, Master, Lord, things that seem, um, God, like uh, weaknesses, I pray that your strength will overshadow it, overwhelm it. Lord, things that seem to be very stubborn, Lord, I pray that uh, your power, your dunamis power will, Lord, um, just un, uh, unearth that, Lord, take that away, Father God, and weed it away, oh God. I just pray that you would transform us, and uh, like even as you said, Lord, that you would... Uh, prune us, Lord, um, so that we would be even more fruitful, Father God. We 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 trust you, Lord, and so we yield ourselves into your mighty hands, God. We thank you. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's uh, start from where we left off uh, last class. Uh, we finished, um, just one second. So, yeah, we were looking at chapter four. Right, chapter four, and then um, we went all the way to um, chapter four and verse uh, sixteen. Right, um, verse sixteen. Okay, so um, yeah, I just want to know if there's any questions, um, anything. You know, feel free to ask. Feel free to post on the chat. Um, so if there's any doubt at all, let's uh, you know clarify it and then move forward. Right. Okay. Um, so. Today we'll we'll continue with um, just to, just to review, you know, like Paul's uh, chapter four verse one onwards. Paul says he refers to himself as a prisoner of the Lord, and um, and he's um, you know uh, very strongly urging the church, the efficient church, the uh, believers there to walk worthy of the Lord, to walk in an in a manner that's appropriate uh, of the calling. You know, like, uh, so he's saying, you know, walk in an appropriate way, like how we would, you know, uh, for a certain occasion, like we would dress up in a certain way in the appropriate manner, right? If it's a, let's say if it's a wedding, we won't go very casually dressed. We won't wear house, what you would normally wear, wear clothes that you would wear to, you know, to sleep. Uh, at home, we would, we would not wear that clothes, right? So, you, it will we will be attired or dressed up suitably, appropriately. So that is what he says. You know, walk worthy, walk in an appropriate manner of the calling with which he called you, right? Because, um, um, and then he goes on to explain how we can walk in that appropriate manner. So this is the so he's explaining that you know lowliness, gentleness, long suffering, or patience. And bearing with one another. Now, this is the appropriate manner, or this is the worthy uh, a way, uh, walk in which uh, we can walk worthy of the calling. Uh, this is what he's asked. And endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So, uh, to be at peace with one another, that uh, supernatural peace which God has given us, to be able to put it on display, uh, to be able to ex extend it to one another. And endeavoring, meaning you make every attempt make every attempt, make an effort. Uh, it requires effort in order to uh, maintain that oneness and unity, okay? And and then he goes on to talk about what is common. You know, there's one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of all. So these are all, you know, uh, th these are all common things in the sense, see, you see, whatever is eternal, 
right whatever is uh, uh, you know uh, of eternal uh, value this is it right these are things that uh, um, you know that's these these are eternal uh, it's established for eternity that there is one body and one spirit and so on so he's saying okay this is what the truth is this is what what is of eternal value so so you know go by that right so this is something that is common there's one god one father one father and he is above all is through all and in you all so you know no matter what other differences might be like right, in terms of nationality language background education whatever it is th- these are things that are common so let let that not divide you but let this actually unite you so you make every attempt knowing that you know it's the same god you worship is the same lord the other one other person other believer also worships um make every attempt to keep that uh, bond of uh, unity uh, in the bond of peace right and then from 7 onwards we saw that how uh, we have been graced with spiritual gifts and and the lord jesus he ascended in order to give us these gifts ascended into heaven uh, the gifts of the spirit because he said that he needs to go to the father when he goes to the father he will send the spirit send the holy spirit and the holy spirit came and dwelt in us and and all the these gifts are the manifestation of the spirit or the dis- display of the spirit right so and then he goes on to say you know the one who ascended also descended like he went to hades and uh, uh, and uh, and and then he talks about uh how he descended he and then he went above that he might fill all things and he gave uh some okay now uh verse 7 these are this is the, now this is something which is important that we need to understand and grasp uh, in verse 7 we see to each one grace was given according to the measure of christ's gift so he, he's talking about something that is common to all or to all of us we have um uh this th- these gifts of the spirit and it's it's there in a measure right so it's there in a measure and we can grow in it we can grow in this grace we can grow in this gifting we can grow uh, in this empowering um as long as we you know exercise it right put it to good use minister faithfully steward it well right now in verse 11 he says and he himself gave some Okay. It, now this is not each one, but he gave some. So it is something that he uh, uh, that he desires, or he has already decided, and he wills that some will be apostles, some will be prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So he himself gave some to be, uh, you know. And then this is what we we call as a fivefold ministry, you know, because there are five uh, distinct ministerial gifts, right? And um, so. uh evangelists and pastors and teachers and prophets and apostles now verse 12 talks about why the purpose right uh, the purpose for this for which he has actually called some to be this um which is for the equipping of the saints from for the equipping uh, of the saints for the work of ministry so the saints to be equipped to minister everyone every believer to be equipped for the minister so equipped to minister so which which goes without saying that the apostle will equip the saint to be in the apostolic the prophet the prophet will equip the saint in the prophetic the evangelist will equip the saints in the evangel- in evangelism and the pastoral and the teaching and so on so um whatever the grace that has been given and uh, the the uh, the ministers those who are called and appointed will equip the body of christ uh, will equip the saints in that right now what does this happen this equipping what does this um result in it's resulting in ministry right so uh, there are some who are equipped in the apostolic and they are going around and and they are they are exercising their apostolic gift the calling uh and uh, they are pioneering doing some pioneering work uh, opening up territories extending the kingdom of god in in areas and places where it has never been so they are doing that so uh, those those who are in the prophetic again they have been trained to hear the voice of god to discern the voice of god and to obey the voice of god so you know 
So all this is happening. They are doing their work of ministry, whether it's reaching out, whether it's building up uh, those who are already reached. Right. So all this is resulting in the edifying, in the building up of the body of Christ. Okay. So the church is being built up. It's been built up stronger. It's built up um, bigger because more and more are being added. Uh, because of the work of ministry of the saints. Okay, so uh, the the other uh, uh, or some of the other aspects of why the apostolic uh, why why this fivefold ministry is that they will continue to equip the body of Christ till there is the body of Christ is edified, and all all believers come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the that's verse thirteen to a perfect man to maturity. To the measure of the stature of Christ, which means uh, you know he's the standard, he's the role model. So that Christ's maturity, Christ's level of maturity, Christ's um, you know standard of maturity is the role model. Like that's the level. So till we all come to that, you know, this equipping happens. Right. So uh, and uh, why maturity? Uh, why maturity? Why should everyone grow in the knowledge of Christ? Well, the reason is very simple, because um, we should not be childish, right? We should not be childish, uh, because being uh, being childish, uh, continuing to be childish, it's dangerous. Right? Continuing to be childish is dangerous because we'll be, uh, you know, swayed this way and that way by every wind of doctrine, by every teaching, right? which might not be necessarily biblical. Okay, so that's the danger. So when people are uh, mature, then they'll be they are able to discern. Right? They are able to discern what is right, what is wrong, uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit. So that we should no longer be children, with every uh, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Which means that there are people who are manipulating, who are you know who are doing things not for the not with good intentions not with sincere intentions for that will benefit the body of christ that will benefit the believer but they're doing it for the sake of their own advantage and benefit so that they might get some benefit out of it right so they are plotting which means they are craftily planning something um, how can i get something out of this person right deceitful Plot, uh, plotting, which means it's not, uh, you know, all this pl planning and everything is deceitful. It's full of deceit. It's full of lies. And uh, and that is what uh, they are doing. So uh, that is verse 14. Right? Um, and then uh, sorry, one second. Yeah. And, and, and then in the, uh, so we, we should no longer be in that manner. So we need to come to place of maturity. But we need to speak the truth in love. When we speak, in speaking the truth in love, which means in continuing to speak the truth of God in love, that we all grow up in all things into Him. Okay. So in all aspects, in all areas of our lives, that we grow up and uh, that we become mature. Okay. So that's. Um, um, that's the objective. So it it all flows from you know why did the Lord Jesus establish this in the church? It, it has all these effects, you know, one after the other, one after the other. Uh, it's um, people are being you know equipped, they are ministering, the body of Christ is being edified. Everybody is coming to the unity of the faith. They are coming to the you know the knowledge of the um, uh, of the Son of God, and they are being mature. To, the, to be a perfect man, and and that's no other, no human role model, but Christ Himself, uh, or Christ Himself is a standard. And when they come to that place of maturity, then there is no going to and fro with every wind of doctrine. They they've reached a place of maturity, uh, uh, so that they can, they don't have to be swayed by the plotting, by the cunningness of man, by the deceitfulness of man, um, who are. Of so-called ministers who are actually, uh, you know, who who are actually doing things for their own benefits, right? So, uh, so what this does is that the whole body of Christ is edified, it's growing, and uh, it's being strengthened 
where every part does its share. Okay, now that's another thing that every part, which means everybody who is a believer, is a is a part of the body, right? Every believer is part of the spiritual body of Christ, and every believer has their role and function. Okay, and as they faithfully fulfill that role and function, as they do their part, which causes, uh, you know, they are, uh, I mean, they are causing growth of the body and edification of the body, right? according to the effective working by which every part does its share. Okay, so, so this is this is God's plan. This is God's will, and this is God's design. Um, in the body of Christ, so we will do well as um, as ministers of the gospel, as pastors, as spiritual leaders to 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 get this, you know, into our own uh, in 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 our spirit, okay, to receive this in our spirit, and say, okay, this is why we are doing church. You know, this is why I'm there as a pastor, or this is why I'm there as a teacher, or this is why I'm there as an apostle or an evangelist, as a minister of God. Uh, I'm there to Yes, and there to share and you know preach and all that. But the big picture, uh, the objective of it is that the believer is uh, equipped and edified right? in sharing Christ, in sharing the truth, uh, in sharing all these messages. Uh, you know, Sunday after Sunday, that's the objective that we are taking this believer, you know, from where they are to a place of maturity. Okay, right. Uh, let's look at verse, verse 17, uh, verses 17 onwards. I'll just share the notes as well. Um, okay. Right. Okay, so verse 17, right? This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Okay, so here's some instructions. So you're saying, this I say, therefore. Okay, so this is what Christ has done. The verses before that, this is what Christ has done. This is what he has established in the body to be the, for the body to be edified, uh, equipped, and so on. Therefore, I say to you, te and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk, or you, your walk, your life should not be the same as how it was. Or it should not be the same as the rest of the Gentiles, people who do not know God. Now, there should be a difference. Okay, now, so he goes on to explain that the rest of, how the rest of the Gentiles walk. Okay, people who do not have a living relationship with Jesus. Um, how, how is their life? How is their walk? It says in verse 17, they walk in the futility of their mind. Okay. So, uh, which means he's saying in the emptiness or their life is futile. In the in other word for that is vanity. Okay. So it's uh, in moral depravity. You know, the, it's it does not have truth in it. It does not have. Uh, uh, it's not appropriate. Right. It it does not have truth. It's uh, morally. Uh, morally corrupt. Right? So saying you can't walk like that, you can't uh, walk in or live in the same way. 
right in the futility of their mind now why is there why is in futility, when he says futility of the mind uh, verse 18 talks about you know why is it futile or why is it wasteful right uh, why why it does not have any um, uh, any 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 kind of uh, benefit right spiritually or even otherwise right? so it means that um, um, having their so verse 18 he says having their understanding darkened okay so which means their uh, faculty of their mind imagination the ability to think process uh, decision making everything is uh, darkened okay so it's uh, saying it, it has come to a place of uh, not in the light but it's darkened okay so it does not have the light of the truth okay so uh, the whole thought process imaginations decisions intellect because they have not come to the truth of the gospel it is darkened now it might be people might be highly intellectual people might be highly uh, intelligent uh, very imaginative very creative okay but it's the the thought process and everything is darkened um and it's it's em- empty in the in a sense you know it's uh, it says it's a futility of the mind okay they are living according to their mind according to their thought process is everything but that is not come to the uh, light of truth so therefore in that sense it is darkened verse 18 second part also says that being alienated from the life of god so what does alienated mean alienated means uh, separated okay distanced separated shut out okay having no connection so being alienated from what distance or disconnected from what from the life of god okay so this is the reality of an unbeliever now the thing is um, you know a person might be um, you know might be wonderful you know might, might be a good person might be a very you know person of uh, very high values you know morally even you know uh, to some to to a large extent you know maybe even better than some believers right um doing the right thing saying the right thing and trying to live a good life uh but even for such people what happened what, the reality is that they are alienated cut away distance disconnected from the life of god okay so the word used there is zoe life zoe which means god kind of life or the life that god has it's not biological life but it's spiritual life right? zoe of god they are alienated from the zoe of god from the life of god uh, because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart okay this ignorance and blindness ignorance uh, uh, we know what that word uh, ignorant means ignorance means that uh, you know there's no knowledge or they uh, they're not um, uh, uh, they've not come they've not, they don't know there's lack of knowledge there's uh, there's a, a lack of understanding right so that is ignorance so because of the ignorance that is in them they are not understood things um, or will willfully or even otherwise uh and it says because of the blindness okay blindness we know is something that we associate with sight right being able to see and not, uh, not being able to see right is blindness um but here it says uh, because of the blindness of their heart okay um uh, blindness of their heart the word you say is cardia okay which means uh their spirit is dulled their spirit is calloused okay, so the spirit is not able to receive because it's disconnected from the life of god okay so we see this important spiritual truth that yes uh, people could be highly uh, skillful they could be uh, very intelligent um, but there is they are in a way uh, they are disconnected they are cut away from the life of god 
because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the blindness of their heart. Now, their spirit is cut away from the life of God and therefore not able to perceive who God is, not able to understand, not able to understand God's ways. Okay, so, so he's saying, you know, don't walk like them. You know, don't try to copy them. Don't try to compare uh, yourself with them. And don't try to walk with them. You know, you, you walk worthy of the calling. Now, don't try to copy. Don't try to uh, live like them because this is, this is the reality. This is how um, they live. Now, this is the reality. This is the spiritual reality. They are cut away. Now, the Lord Jesus says uh, in John chapter 15, we see that um, he says that uh, I am the vine, you are the branches. So what does he mean by that? He means that the life that is flowing in him is flowing in the believer. So he says, abide in me and uh, you will, you know, you will be and let my words abide in you and, and you will ask what you desire and so on. And and he also he says, you know, you are the branches, I am the vine. And as long as the branch abides in the vine or stays in the vine, it will bear fruit. So, so which means we see that, well, life of Jesus, the Zoe God kind of life flows from the vine to the branch. It's disconnected, does not have life. So a person who is not yet a branch, not yet made that decision to be connected to the life of Christ, is alienated from the life of God. Okay, so so uh, verse nineteen again, who being past feeling have given themselves over. Okay, now in, in, because of this, because they are alienated, now they have given themselves over, uh, you know, to to live in a certain way. And what is it? They have given themselves over to lewdness. Uh, they've given themselves over to uh, to work all uncleanness with greediness or so greed and uncleanness and you know everything that is uh, morally uh, more that is immoral is found right now it it it, may, it might be in some degree it might be in a, I mean, for some people it might be in a you know a small degree but then for some it might be in a greater degree but the fact is this that you know this is the reality right because because they do not have the life of God in them. Um, and then verse 20, okay, but you have not so learned Christ. Okay. Now that is not your reality. Right? This is not how the condition is. This is not your condition now. This is not how you have learned Christ. Okay, your condition is different. Your spiritual condition is different. You are, in other words, you know, you are you have the life of God. So everything that is opposite of what he described for the Gentile is what is true for you know the one who is a believer. So, uh, which means that, uh, well, the believer has the life of God. The believer is, is not distanced from the life of God. The believer is connected to the life of God. And uh, there's no blindness of the heart because the eyes of his understanding are being opened, have been opened, right? And uh, now he's a he or she is a slave of righteousness, and uh, not a slave to sin, right? So, so this is the difference. So he's saying you have not so learned Christ. Okay. Um, if indeed you have heard him, and have been taught by him. Um, so I think this is it. You have heard. You have been taught by Christ. You have been taught by the Spirit. You have been, you have heard the Spirit. So we know that he spent, uh, Paul spent, you know, this two and a half plus years uh, in Ephesus, teaching them each and every day, training them, and then they were all greatly benefited. You no, know? they they heard, their lives were changed. They went. They they impacted the lives of others in the you know in the entire you know uh, neighboring regions and so on so so this is what it is that you have you have heard him and you have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus so now this is this is true for us as believers right we have the privilege of hearing him we have the privilege of being taught and uh, being taught by Jesus right so because of this, 
verse 20 he says that you put off okay now this is your spiritual reality you are connected to the life of christ you know you have been taught by him you have been uh, you have heard his voice uh, you have been taught by him so now you need to make some decisions you need to live in a certain way you cannot go on living the old life right so what should you do with uh, regard to how you know you need to live you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust okay, so so he is putting the again you know like what we we've seen in galatians he's he's asking the believer to be responsible right, to take the responsibility of putting off right putting off the former former conduct so to make some decisions to put off to um to make some choices about how they live okay um so you, that that word put off that means to put aside to uh, literally uh, push or to push away right to cast off they're saying this is what you need to do you need literally need to push away your old conduct you know cast off the old conduct you can't continue to hold on or you know uh, think oh, should i live like this you know should i consider these options sinful options no you push away you put it aside have nothing to do with it right concern concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust uh, sorry deceitful lust which means that that old man um it, it's actually growing corrupt the old nature so it's uh, it's decaying right it's not producing like it's not life producing it's uh, it's decaying so why do you want it right uh, according to deceitful lust so according to certain you know these strong desires which are in fact deceitful meaning it uh, it is uh, it is something that uh, it, it it is it is something that is not of the truth and uh, it's something that is deceiving right and it's a strong desire lust like craving but it's deceiving it's a strong craving it's a strong um, longing it's something that is forbidden sinful and it's deceitful right probably leading you into more and more into sin leading you more and more into uh it is something that is unedifying something that's trapping you like a prisoner so put away cast away push it away right and be renewed in the spirit of your mind be renewed be renovated be changed okay so that's the uh, that's the thing that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind so the whole responsibility you know for this is upon the believer now okay so the uh, we as believers we have to make certain decisions certain choices now what will help us make those decisions and make those choices is the life of god that is in us right the holy spirit is in us we are we are connected to jesus we have the life of uh, jesus in us you know the god kind of life zoe uh, flowing in us so that is there to empower us and strengthen us but we need to with our will with our mind we need to make a choice now that making a choice and that renewing of the mind to think in a different way it is our responsibility now god will not do it for us the lord will not do it for us because he's given us that free choice he's given us the ability to decide so it says be renewed in the spirit of your mind and again verse 24 that you put on the new man which was created according to god in true righteousness and holiness that you put on um, now the fact is you know we are already new creations right we are new creations there is change um that has happened to our spirit we are born again we are the righteousness of god in christ now this putting on is to affirm that to come in agreement with that each and every day right that you put on what do you need to put on 
uh, verse 22 he says you put off no it's like taking off something away from you taking off you know maybe there's a, a, you know you wrapped in you know some dirty clothes or something you, know, you just take that off push it aside and then you put on you know some clean garments you put on the new man now this is a choice that you need to make every day you know uh, it's already been you already been made clean but you are affirming you are coming in agreement yes put on the new man right? which was created according to god in true righteousness and holiness so this uh, new man the spiritual reality is according to god in his likeness um and in true righteousness nothing deceitful my right? true righteousness and holiness okay uh, verse 25 some practical things okay let's read that verse 25 onwards uh, therefore putting away lying let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor for we are members of one another be angry and do not sin do not let the sun go down on your wrath nor give place to the devil let him who stole steal no longer but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him who has need let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth but what is good for necessary Uh, uh, edification that it may impart grace to the hearers and do not grieve the holy spirit of god by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption let all bitterness wrath anger clamor and evil speaking would be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another tender hearted forgiving one another even as god in christ forgave you okay so um so he's saying therefore you know all these things is there all these things are yours you've come to this place put away lying okay don't don't continue to have uh, or speaking of lies or um you know using lies uh, to get ahead or to get an adv- unfair advantage you know put away lying speak uh, you speak the truth um you speak the truth with your neighbor Okay, for we are members of one another. So we are actually members. We are actually part of the same body, which means if you are actually, you know, if you are speaking a lie in order to put down, pull down someone, so that you can, you know, go uh, higher, or if you are speaking a lie in order to, in order to, you know, save a situation for yourself, you know, for to make you look good, to uh, to cover up something. right you are actually in other words saying you are actually hurting yourself okay you are hurting yourself why because you are members of each other okay so uh, well, at that moment it might seem like well i'm glad i got out of that situation right but it's going to come back you have actually put yourself you have actually hurt yourself right um so he's saying you know you put away lying you speak the truth with your neighbor because actually you are members of one another okay verse 26 be angry and do not sin okay uh, interesting verse because it says be angry do not sin or in your anger do not sin so so we we see that yes anger is an emotion and um well anger can lead to you know if not checked you know, if not corrected or if we continue on in anger uh, continue to feel that anger you know it can lead to a lot of destructive behavior right uh, for ourselves and for others um you know, physically we might get violent verbally we might speak words uh, hurt someone uh, we might do all these things but the thing is it yes we might feel angry because some there is some injustice Okay, we, when we re- sometimes when we read the newspapers we feel angry right? we feel an anger oh this is not right it is it is unjust you know, this person has been dealt with unfairly uh, why is there so much injustice you know it's because of sin and so we feel that emotion of anger but do not let it lead to sin i do not let it become a sinful act because it it is very possible it has the potential to cause you to sin right but rather let your response be in righteousness okay um so he says uh, you know 
do not sin do not let the sun go down on your wrath you know you deal with it now you have to deal with it no don't uh, uh, in the sense if if in the if in the day if during the day you have felt this you have become angry uh, don't wait you know till the next day right so he says don't let the sun go down on your wrath so uh, before night time so in other words figuratively it means that you deal with it quickly right don't continue don't prolong it to deal with it and the important thing is this don't let the sun go down on your wrath because if it if you're going to extend that time then you're going to uh, the next verse is nor give place to the devil what happens is that the longer you keep you know uh, keep this anger as a, in your heart you are going to give or give place and the word they are used there is a foothold the greek word means foothold um you're giving a topos you know a foothold for the devil for the enemy so it's like when he gets a foothold he's going to come in and create confusion and you know steal kill destroy so don't do that don't give place to the devil so this is the thing so you, so anger actually uh, has to be dealt with we can re- we can feel the emotion of anger and not let it lead us to sin but we can you know deal with it in the right way it can be a righteous response to you know this righteous anger that we feel it can be a righteous response to it uh, which will res- res- you know the 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 wrath of man will not result in the righteousness of god but you know but if if it's a righteous act that we respond to by the power of the spirit then it will be a you know uh, it will have god's approval on it right okay we'll stop here and we'll uh, we'll come back and continue